Welcome everyone and I have another game for you. I know, I know, it's once again the professor, but what can I say? I love the way they play, I love the way they're ahead of the curve on a certain thing and here today in that game it's exactly going to show, especially on the duo lane from Crazy Fool and Survivor, they're gonna show like a beautiful lane control and how you can get so far ahead without even having to really fight and just like perfectly controlling the wave, stopping any crash of the enemy team and putting the enemy team on the back foot. But I think it was also like a nice game because like an Aether, despite being like completely out of this game for a big majority of it, it just stay calm, don't get this turn and skip the farming where I can find it and in the end he managed to pull back into that game. That was a great game to watch and we're gonna analyze it together. And so we're gonna review here the match, uh, like I said, between Dirty Lake and the boys, which to be honest, I still like don't know if Import is part of that team or if it's just like subbing for them. And thank you Lebanese Kid for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're enjoying your stay. Because um, Import, I think, is part of Indecisive, but I know that Dirty Lake and the boys had a new jungler when they... Uh, I think it was Happy Picker that was their jungler in the previous tournament, and they had Bry as their mid laner on PCC6, and now Happy Picker is back on mid lane, and their previous jungler, Gratty, that wasn't part of the roster anymore, now he's playing for another team, and um, I think he's playing for Pinzo Danzo's team. I don't know the name of the team. Uh, and so here I think they maybe still like on the lookout to find like a jungler to complete their roster. And so for now they have been playing exclusively with import in the jungle as a, like I assume as a sub, but I don't know the, the story behind. I don't know like what it's actually like. If is import like part of Dirty Lake and the boys is import part of Indecisive. I don't know. So here we have the Argus mid that is going to be answered by Soul Reaper with the Fae. We do get the Beleka as a support, so that's something that, uh, for instance, like in EU, uh, Manchu loves to do a lot. It's not that common in uh, NA, but it's it can be like a very, very strong support. Playing into like, this can be like kill lane on both sides, like Muriel, Beleka, Jongo, Murdoch. Like there is a lot of like action potential, like kill potential. We do have the Rampage on the jungle to be able to have like some very good early ganks. But we also have six on the Calorie and six on Assassin can actually like be super duper scary. So I'm quite curious what is going to happen. We do have the Quang into the Severok. That feels very, very Fang Boost six. Um, uh, when the Quang was like absolutely at the top of the food chain. And to be fair, like Quang is still like super strong in the offline, probably still at the top of the food chain. Like people were playing like the Severok into it because they weren't winning, but at least they were like not dying too much and can be Still like doing something with the pick, in a sense. So, so far we see like 6 is going to D-Ward. Happy Picker is aware that 6 can be around. Dual lane has been playing like pretty passive on both sides. We're just trying to poke with abilities, but no full on engage. Here we're looking maybe for Seismic Assault, but like an Aether disengage immediately. Tower under attack. We have 6 that is going to pass towards like the is 4 camp. Wang is actually like looking for the calorie, but the ward onto the blue buff. So he's gonna get information. We do have the Rampage lo looking for something in the mid lane, import, trying to find like a rock opportunity. Uh, but there was none, and so like here, Soul Reaper, no presence from 6. Of course, it's a Kalari early on. Uh, those fights can be like a little bit complicated for the Rampage, so decided to go for the River buff, and they secure both River buff. And what is interesting is here, like after the River buff, you go immediately for the gank for our import, and we're gonna get find the stun. We force the flash away from Crazy Fool, and no, import can go for his blue side. And so that's something I love about import jungling, is you're gonna get like a timing of ganking after you clear your blue side. But here, the timing of ganking was better before you clear, so he takes it. And that's a free blink being secured by the Belika and a lot of damage being dealt to Crazy Fool. So now like this dual lane is very hard to play, that secure also like the gold buff. So this whole rotation secure the gold buff and also like the flash out of the Belika and some pressure for that dual lane by simply like the cost of um, just like delaying slightly your blue side clear, which means that those buffs are going to respawn like slightly later, 
but at the same time it's not that huge of a deal because you're not really losing tempo overall and you offer so much stronger tempo for your dueling. So here I guess like we have the wave like coming back. Toasty is now low on mana. Unfortunately don't have like a very very good timing to back. The wave is not like in the perfect state. But also Survivor doesn't have any mana, so they're looking to crash that, but it's not gonna crash with Toasty being around. Actually, it's gonna crash like I think as Toasty you could sacrifice your full health bar to stop that from crashing, and then you just reset and offer like an eight uh safety and and, and and quite like a, a lead here. So we got river buff, we do get like the Belica rotating for the river buff and Happy Picker is just gonna go around. Not gonna stay in the mid lane after like the Belica was missing. Don't want to offer like any gank. And he's gonna go for like here. And unfortunately, no stun. So Nitro just Phantom Rush away and it's gonna be like nothing happening in that off lane. So a little bit of action. Kalari so far hasn't been like present except like the gank on the offlane. Uh, that just got the flash out of the quang. Or hot pursuit has been like used. And here you can see like they're trying like to be aggressive onto like an Aether to on the timing of the cannon to stop him from being able to last hit that cannon. And they don't know where the calorie is, so they kind of have to respect that. Try to go for the boulder throw, doesn't connect. And now, like, they're kind of like in a tough spot because, like, it's a huge wave. They need to step up for the last hit, but it's also like the timing the calorie is going to be around, and the rampage can't really afford to stay here. So this dual lane is actually like in a in a tough spot. And we're gonna get some damage. But six is just like applying presence. They know there is no kill, but the goal here was like to have that freeze and take advantage of that freeze. And now they can like keep that freeze up, forcing the enemy team to reset. And that's gonna put like survivor ahead. He's at 55 CS to 32. And he's gonna be like even like further ahead because like this is also like a full wave that's gonna disappear. We're gonna lose the cannon on the side of uh, Lake Nature. And that's gonna be like a very, very rough situation. In the meantime, we do have 6 1 HP. Import is gonna secure it. And so we got the level 6. Soul Reaper, I guess, like they tried to kill the Argus, but pretty good defense. And because of that kill and the fact that they have a freeze on dual lane, I guess we're going for a rotation, maybe trying to either break the freeze or like take the advantage of the freeze to get the Fangtus. That's the two options. And here we can see. We're gonna go for the Fangtus and we accept to keep the freeze. So that's gonna be like putting like an Aether even further behind, but that's gonna be putting the rest of the team slightly ahead. Well, we go for the stun onto like an Aether, but that was the boulder at the same time. We're still like looking to crash that wave and Crazy Fool and Survivor are still like the master of not letting wave crash. Like they're, they're probably the best duel in at making that and just like always like, hey, you want to back? Nope, you're not gonna back because we have a freeze. And here like like an Aether is just like, okay, I don't want to deal with that, I'm just gonna take the gold buff, but the gold buff is like, it's for CS overall. It's gonna reset here. Crazy fool, like even managed to deny that gold buff, like this dual lane is getting absolutely dominating on the lane control. And that's beautiful to see for the side of, of professors. It just like very clean, like map control, lane control. And that like forced like Lakinator and Tosi in such like a bad situation. And we look at, at the CS, it's 40 to 80. Like Survivor has double the CS in a lane that actually like 
they were doing pretty fine and they only like received like one gank from the Kalari on the side of Survivor plus Crazy Fool while Import have shown two time in that duo lane and they're still like getting absolutely like destroyed and the freeze is still not break broken. Like such like uh, a schooling by the professors. Like here in that regard, it really feels like the professor are playing against the student and they're just like teaching them a lesson. Uh, he's a little bit out of range, unfortunately for the Argus. So that makes that dive like a little bit longer. If the Argus was in range, Nitro would probably be dead, but no, it's a little bit tough. So Happy Picker, I guess like not fully um, used to the range of Argus yet. It's a new character, it's the latest one that's been added to the cast, so naturally. It's not always like easy and we're gonna get like a kill onto Lekonator. Uh and because like the freeze is still there. So here they try to break the freeze but now 6 is around and we're gonna get the ultimate and Enemy has fallen. and the freeze is still not broken. 40 to 87. Lekonator is not gonna play that match. And that's just like lane control. And that makes me so happy to see that Professor are actually like doing that just so well that they don't even really like just like keeping that situation for so long is you, you force the enemy team to have to make a play that the only play they can make is like bring their jungler on the timing that the, the enemy jungler is not around to crash the wave and try to reset everything. But there. And here you can see we have finally like import that is coming to just like try to crash the wave. It's not even like to get a kill, it's just to try to crash the wave so Lekonator can start farming a little bit. So import has to sacrifice a little bit his jungling, and now finally we get a clean crash. 11 minutes in. And now we can like finally reset and get at a moment like the freeze like now it's gonna push back and so now we can like try to get the freeze for ourselves but that costs like 60 cs lead on the carry it's like it's 140 percent more cs on survivor than it is on lake and which is absolutely insane Ooh, the close cool blow on two people here soul reaper is at one hp it's probably gonna die and now we have Nitro that is getting like a little bit low. We do get the Tether ultimate. And unfortunately, we connect only one shot out of the three. And here we're looking at the dual lane. And here we can see you have six that is behind. And I guess like the idea is the here that we want to guarantee this crash back. So then we can reset up a, a, a freeze later on. And then we're actually like in a perfect situation. And we're looking at the dive on top of that here. Oh, we miss everything. So that's not ideal. We also miss the ultimate. No, I think the ultimate connected is just that the mural shield like kind of nullify that. So they should like stop it here. Like they tried to go for the dive. Wasn't successful. So they can like afford to go for the um, reset. They want to crash one more wave because both of the side of... I'm sorry about that. So both of the side of the side of um, Dirty Lake and the boys have resetted. And so it was like kind of free to go for back. One more crash and now they can reset. They can come back. They'll be so much stronger. As we can see Survivor already the Ironwood bow. Already the crest. While Lekonator two level down. And only finishing the Lightning Hawk. So like this dual lane can't really like fight. They don't have reversal on Fortune. And so here we do have Nitro that is coming, but that was like a timing that if they wanted on the side of Professor, they could have gone for another freeze. But here they're just going to go for the priority to get the Fangtus because the enemy team get the mini prime and they're going to try to secure that um, <coughs> Fangtus. We do get Lekonator getting the snipe on Soul Reaper on the other side of the map and Lobber is going to apply like some damage onto this tier 2 tower. The idea I think was to have Soul Reaper defending uh, thing, but... Here, Dirty Lake and the boys utilizing very well the map. They see that the enemy team was rotating for the Fangtus. They find like a kill thanks to their like global ultimate. And that means that no Lobber 
Also, like, get, like, a lot of damage on that tier 2 tower. It's actually, like, very close to dying, but I don't think he can secure it. So they got, like, the tier 1 tower in off lane, tier 1 tower in mid lane, and almost the tier 2 tower in off lane. So sometimes, also here, Dortilek and the boss showing that you don't have to contest objective if you're in no position to contest, but try to play the map instead while doing so. And here, as an answer, we see that 6 is going, like, for the invade. The blue buff wasn't ready. They're gonna find like a ward, so they have the information that the Kalari is on this side of the map. So we're gonna go for a little like dewarding session. And so we do have the mini prime on Happy Picker. Happy Picker 1, 0, and 2. Rest lagging already finished. Alchemical worlds being stacked. I assume like if he was proficient with the stacking, it's already like finished. We're going for the Caustica on the second or third item slot. And uh, overall, we have Lover slightly ahead on CS. Jungle is even. Mid lane slightly ahead on CS for the side of Tortilek and the boys. But still, like those 50 CS lead by the side of uh, Professor, 60 CS lead on the carry wall is actually like a big deal. Because now, ooh, Lekonator forced to flash away. So, no flash on Lekonator. Lekonator cannot catch a break in that match. Like it's level 7. The same level as the enemy support, two level behind anyone else in the enemy team. It's kind of tough. People are just like around. Import is trying like to defend his blue buff. Six is trying to go away. And actually like kind of managed to bamboozle a little bit import. We do get survivor rotating towards the duo, the offlane, killing the lobber. They try to go on to Crazy Fool. Crazy Fool 1 HP. The rock is enough to secure that kill. But still, like, we pull out a lot of people. Four people on this side of the map. So we do have to be careful because that means that can be like the tier 1 tower being taken in offlane. And I think it's gonna be it. So you can see immediately Happy Picker realizing he's gonna like a black pressure on mid lane. The dual lane is gonna take like this tower. That will allow like an Aether to start being back a little bit into that match. I'm not a big fan that Toasty share the local gold. Like, Lekonator is that far behind that this 150 gold that Toasty taken for himself, I feel like shouldn't have been the case. Like, Lekonator really need that gold to come back into the match. I guess they're looking for something onto the offlane with the River Soul of Fortune, but Nitro and Survivor are already, like, long gone. So it's going to be, like, a tier 1 tower exchange and kill exchange on each side of the map. Import a little bounty on his head. That can be interesting to collect for the side of professors. And here we can see Lekonator starting to stabilize a little bit, but not enough. Uh, and so that's going to be like a tower. So now we're starting to get like the gold back. I think we got like um, two tier one tower on each side. Uh, I guess we got three tier one towers. So still slightly ahead on the side of Dirty Lake and the boys. Uh, but... Um, the CS is even, actually, wow. So we're starting to, to catch up like quite a lot, despite like, where is the CS lead? Well, that's pretty impressive, actually. But still like Lekonator fighting to, to catch up, working towards the tainted uh, rounds while the Sky Splitter is already finished. Luckily for them, Survivor is going Sky Splitter second. So we have a little moment that we can actually like fight that Drongo now because Sky Splitter second is not the most efficient way to have damage. Ooh, oh, because of like the rock, we can actually like stop like Nitro to be able to actually like jump, but we're gonna get like the. Fly trap, we're gonna try to kill like that rampage. Rampage is still 1 HP. It's not gonna be enough. 6 at 1 HP, Nitro 1 HP, everyone 1 HP. We're flashing everywhere. Survivor flashing in aggressively, trying to find like the pick. Happy picker, not very tanky, and Survivor has a lot of damage, but actually not that much. JK, he has gone Sky Splitter. I still like wonder why people go Sky Splitter second on Drongo. I don't know when we are going to finally stop doing that. Maybe when I finish my hero builder and people can see the numbers. But yeah, here, if you add like Demolisher, probably people die. Uh, also, like, yeah, I, I don't know. It's also like Tented Round is better than Sky Splitter Second. 
like the, there is a lot of items that are better like lightning oak is better uh, like almost every single item is better than sky splitter second i don't know why we go sky splitter second on drongo so here we have crazy fool just trying like to be in reasons and try to stop them from doing the objective but in the end he just like ended up dying that was like very very weird that's gonna be a pickup for dirty like and the boys And they secure also the Fang too, so Dirty Like and the boss doing a good job in structures. Like overall, in terms of like individual laning, like we have seen like a very, very strong play overall on how they absolutely like dominated uh when it comes to um the the strengths of like this freeze that they have gone into the dual lane. But on playing the map overall, Dirty Like and the boys are doing a better job. Uh they're getting like towers left and right, they're getting objective. They're not like forcing fight uh, when they're uh, not with the advantage. Vanquisher, Vanquisher first um, is could be the best. Depends what you're doing. Uh, if you're looking at if you have like very like squishy in your lane uh, here, it's the case with the Muriel and the Murdoch. Yeah, it's the best option because with just a combo of old Rusty, Rad Round, Ultimate, you one shot any squishy at the Vanquisher power spike. And so Vanquisher first is like super duper strong because you one shot people with just like a combo, which is something that is insane. Uh, that's the only match I've watched so far, Crazy Fool. Uh, before I've watched like the whole uh, screen block of Flow State against um, uh, the Chef. So what are we looking here? Import is looking to find like maybe a pick. We got the stun onto six. Six is getting absolutely obliterated. Forced to flash that's for all guillotine away. And now we're gonna like go for the follow-up of fight, but we already used like two ultimates, three ultimates to just like deal with that rampage. And that rampage is still like LC, is still not dead. This fight is gonna be very tough. We see that Nitro is forced to flash away onto the flower, but not that mean that Soul Reaper has to flash away. Overall, we're gonna try to chase that. We try to get the tether, but a very nice seismic assault by Crazy Fool kind of stop that play from happening. But still, like a huge W by the side of Dirty Leg and the boys. They only like exp expanded like a little bit of utility while getting a lot for the enemy team. But here we have to be careful because Survivor is so much stronger than actual that Lycanator is, and that's come like from like what we have said earlier about like how they do like this perfect freeze. If Survivor wasn't Sky Splitter second. Like, probably he could be able to absolutely demolish anyone at that moment in the match. But uh, still, he's still, like, way stronger than Lycanator, so Survivor, like, Lycanator cannot really contest him. So we have uh, the all prime being um, available on the map, but no team is that far ahead that they can actually like afford to go for it. Because even though we have slightly more um, uh, objective on the map on the side, like taken by the side of their Chilek and the boys, we have more farm on the side of professors. Uh, and so like overall, like it's anyone's game at that point. Uh, we have like three item finish on the lower so we're slightly better power spike but we're very close to finishing like the item on the side of nitro uh, we're also like finishing like the three item power spike on survivor so here we're slightly better on the carry roll uh item wise on the support uh i think we're actually slightly ahead on the mer oh we're trying to go on to toasty yeah that's one of the thing with the muriel is if you get caught up into a fly trap you cannot fly so here that was like a lot of damage get absolutely destroyed we tried to go on to the quen colossal blow has been expanded lower trying like to survive we're gonna use the ultimate probably gonna find like maybe the pickup oh no we do get like tether into ulti into flash and that actually like managed to disengage cleanly here lacking a slightly uh, more damage lower pretty tanky thanks to the fire blossom flex matrix and the ella frost being finished so the previous power spike kind of saving his life and um, yeah, that means that it's like every team has to work kind of hard for every single kill they get. And that's the type of match I kind of like. It's like 
you need perfect execution, otherwise people are going to get away with a slimmer of HP. We are going to buy like more anti-heal here. We have the Tainted Scepter, Spiked Birch. On the other side, we have Spiked Birch and uh, Tainted Round. Fangtus has respawned, but that's a primal Fangtus. Of course, Dirty Lake and the boys are interested by that Fangtus. Because they would love to have the triple Fangtus. Of course, the side of Professor doesn't want Dirty Lake and the boys to get that Fangtus. To be fair, having a Primal first in a situation that the R Prime is up afterwards and the R Prime is not traded makes like fighting the R Prime afterwards very complicated. So here we're trying to get like a little bit jungle control, but we're being very mindful to not overstop their boundaries because a trap can be on the way. And for instance, like Belica plus Kalari plus Jungle, like a trap, people can die very quickly. So you have to be very, very mindful every time you step in the jungle. So this time, like Toasty needs to be careful of not getting picked up like the previously, because that's what kind of like starts stuff. And as the Muriel, like you can afford to stay like kind of far back because you have your ultimate, even if you're too far. Uh, and it's very important that you don't get engaged on, especially since here they have the Rampage Quang to be the front line. Like the Muriel should be like realistically, like almost like the further back uh, possible in those team fights. Here we're maybe looking at something onto the duo, the offlane. So the Weeper is chasing Lobber. They kind of try to cut off like this uh, Quang, but I think the Quang is pretty tanky. We do go for the fly trap, and he's pretty tanky, but he still like disappear from the calorie damage plus the pay damage. It's actually like pretty nice because we have like both magical and uh, physical damage and so that's a pickup onto the quank so that's like one of their big tank being gone but still like six and took quite a lot of damage for that they're trying like to be like oh very nice trap here they stop like the jump and he has to flash away very well executed here by the professors and i just like want people like to look at that because it's very like it, it's it's pretty clean and i think like i i, I love what i've seen in a sense that it was also like very well hidden. You watch another one, but came I came neither. Forgot the team names. Yeah, it was uh, the chef against the um, flow state. Here you can see like they they do it kind of like a layering like aspect. And here like they managed to catch the sink very well. Executed. Everyone was ready to follow up, but not everyone was in the same spot so it may, the problem is like if you have everyone on the same spot like suddenly like they can maybe get like an argus stun into like rampage that walk in with the reversal of fortune and suddenly like the whole trap is turning against them but they had like one guy here two guy here and a fourth guy here which means that they're actually like not in a spot that even if they get engaged on they can still turn the fight around So here we're going to try to deal as much damage as, as we can with the ultimate from Happy Picker. We're trying to kill Crazy Fool. Crazy Fool is probably going to die. So Crazy Fool, I guess, like this ID was just he was ready to sacrifice his life to zone them away from the objective. And so that's going to be like the all prime on four people. And to be fair, not having the all prime on. Ooh, we turn that around and very well play. Yeah, Muriel against Kalari. Can be annoying for the calorie, and that's exactly what happened there. Six tried to go for the play, unfortunately, it didn't work out. And what I was going to say is like, as a support, if sacrificing your life can guarantee that the R Prime is clean and the, your team can disengage after, you're probably like the best person to die for it because not having the R Prime on you as a support, it's not that big of a deal compared to losing it on your carry. That's a lot of damage less. Losing it on your frontliners that actually like gonna take damage and sometimes want to be able to disengage. And they find like Soul Reaper, so like a very nice trap here. And that kind of like maybe open that Primal Fangtus now. Like true, they have the R Prime on three people, but they already like lose two and they're in a 5v3 situation. 
They do have to be careful because like the primal functus can act as an additional person. And here we can see they're going on to Toasty. Toasty is trying like to survive. He's actually like dodging the ability. We're gonna deal a lot of damage. People are exploding left and right. Crazy Fool is at one HP. Force of Flash away. Survivor is still like super healthy. So Lobber needs to really respect that. He's gonna get like damage. Try to go for the shield, go for the combo. And we're gonna get like the kill. So we're trading one for one. But then we get the long arm of the low to secure the kill also onto Crazy Fool. But no, six is alive. And so they do have to reset. So in the end, we clear out the all prime from everyone. Very well played on the setup, Dirty Like and the boys. Oh, toasty. But the six is gone. Okay, so we are fine. And uh, it's uh, now they're into a good spot. So Lekanator coming back into that match slowly but surely. He's actually like catch up in terms of farming. Overall, uh, despite like the absolutely like uh, like hole he was in in the beginning of the match, and so it's the second time that we see a carry that is actually like not having like a stellar match, but by the fact of being patient, looking for opportunities, keeping the farm up, letting his team like take the hit while he's trying to catch up, actually like uh, allow them to come back and be able to be like a factor in the match. Like the previous match was. The chef against flow state when we have seen like uh cold split pushing the whole match to actually like come back to a point that he was actually able to fight and here we see that like an eater keep farming don't get this hurt on at all and just like he's ready like not for those team fight so here we try to go in nitro took a lot of damage the fly trap has been used but toasty survive it so then soul reaper is gonna get killed so that means that no Toasty can probably like go for the reset and he still has the ultimate. So that means that it's not even like a 4v4. It's still a 5v4 because now we get the mural ultimate that can come back into that fight. One kill onto Crazy Fool. Crazy Fool 1 HP. Lakenator find it through the buckshot. We do have Happy Picker going deep with the mural that protected from the reversal of fortune. We're gonna secure the kill on Survivor. And after killing like three people, six is still around. So we have to be careful because it's able to be stolen. But he was seen on the ward. So Lover is going to be like a nuisance, trying to be annoying to just keep the eyes on the carry. And that forced like the guillotine away. So that means that no six doesn't have his guillotine into hunt combo to actually stall that primal Fanctus. And now we have Happy Picker being a nuisance. Six is going to go inside, jumping on top. But then he gets reception by the Dread Nova from the Argus. And that's going to be the primal fang to stay cured by Dirty Lake and the boys. And that's also triple fang to for themselves. So I guess we're just missing a little bit of gold. Finish the item. Yeah. We wanted to finish the Oblivion Crown, so we'll just go for the farm here. Full build by Happy Picker at 30 minutes in the game. And so here it's like pickup time because we don't have uh, our prime so sieging is actually kind of complex we don't really have sustain either like we can like not die from damage but we do have the wellspring sustain though it's still like pretty good uh, but we have like a huge poke potential with like tether with like the dread nova distance the rock so we can just like go for those poke repetitively without like forcing like any like heads on engage and I guess like the idea is like you keep the pressure up until like then you can go for the all prime and because you have the primal Fangtus, like this fight is like slightly better for yourself and then with like the double uh, big buff you can start sieging stuff and being like in a good spot. Try to force people away. We use like the... I think it's synaptic i don't remember the name of the ultimate of argus i still need to learn it we have dread nova Ether crystal particle shredder and synaptic obliterator i think it's the name oh fly trap onto 
The Quang Lobber taking a lot of damage, but that's a huge cooldown, like being explo ex um, used, expanded. And so now, like we can see, we're gonna like try to go for the impression that we're going for the Or Prime. But Professor are not taking the bait. Primal Fangtus is gone. And here we have Crazy Fool. He was just like pushing the wave, but without like taking any risk of getting engaged on. They're trying to go on to Soul Reaper. Import taking a lot of damage. He has to be careful. He's forced to pop the beam up. Gonna go for the stun onto like the Severog, but the Severog didn't take any damage. Import still like taking a lot of damage. Forced to flash away to not die. And that's probably gonna be like a simple disengage here. Lobber get caught by the Subjugate and do the Seismic Assault. That's a lot of damage. That's a flash of Lobber gone as well. Both frontliner on the side of Dirty Lake and the boys are now without the defensive cooldown and Six decided to go for it aggressively, forcing the reversal of fortune. Lobber is 1 HP, Nitro do find the kill, he tries to survive by going away, Happy Picker 1 HP as well. Professor finding like a very nice fight, baiting the ultimate, Six going again like an Aether, trying to kill it, get the kill on the calorie, but ended up falling. And in the end it's a 3-4-1 with both reversal of fortune and BMOS on cooldown. And so that means that's gonna be like actually like a very very nice like power play by the side of professors. Survivor is trying to secure this tier two tower for himself, uh, and also like actually like survivor get the kill onto the burial that I completely missed. And so only import is still there to be able like to defend that. Trying to use the ice corn talent to try to slow down the enemy team. Use his rock onto like the minions, but there is a lot of minion there, and of course like here the drongo is just like. Pushing, putting himself into a position, he's gonna go dodging the rock damage, import is still trying to clear like as much as he can, still not a BMS, he's back on cooldown so there is like no kill potential but we do secure an inhibitor, we do secure a tier 2 tower, we do secure 4 kills at the expense of only 1 death and so like big option being taken here by the side of professors and uh, on the same time like we have 2 people that were doing the all prime in the meantime, Soul Reaper and Nitro were on it and that's one of the things that also like Professor is probably like one of the best team at is how to spread their resource without like being too thin. Because here you can see like with two people only, a Fey and a Severok, they secure the All Prime. While a lot of team would have seen that they need at least a certain member. So still pretty happy to see like the Professor playing at that level. And also I kind of like because like they're strong on different things that some teams are not. Like this is one of those at the beginning of the match we have seen also like they were like very strong when it comes to actually um, like this lane control was pretty stellar by them. And uh, yeah, it's, um, it's very, very nice to see that uh, there is all those aspects of the game that uh, are exploited by some teams. So I guess here 6 was just like dewarding. Trying to get like control, vision control. 6 is poking a little bit. Happy Picker already took like 30% of his life. We do have the Severog that is trying to initiate like the engage. Try to go for the subjugate, but subjugate doesn't connect. And so we still have the all prime here on everyone. So they have like very, very strong priority. And that probably like just like, as you can see, like they're just like slow playing that. They want to be certain that this that primal Fangtus is for them and very like guaranteed for themselves. And so they just like pressure very, very high, get like all the vision out, and then they're gonna start it once like with only two people, only the two damage dealer are on it. Because they have the region of the all prime like getting poked out, it's not a big deal. And Soul Reaper, Nitro, and Crazy Fool are just there to just like kind of slow down the enemy team. They're gonna try to go on it. We do get an allied inhibitor being destroyed. I wonder by which minion. And now they secure the primal Fangtus. And there was like absolutely like nothing to be honest on the side of Dirty Lake and the boys that they could have done to break like that siege. It was just very, very well executed by the side of professors. And uh yeah. That's now like the inhibitor on the left that got like destroyed by the minion because also like Professor set up like a 
slow push on the left side while they were doing all of that. That's also like something that professors are very good at doing. And uh, yeah, the macro of the side of professors is still as good as ever. And it's going to be like a push that is a little bit too much for them to deal with. And that's probably going to be game. Uh, and I really like that game overall. Like professors, they show like their dominance by like this lane control in the early game. But despite all of that... Dirty Lake and the boys with a very, 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 very nice like answer overall. They find like more plays on the map. They still like don't get disheartened by the fact that they were losing kind of hard. And they still like find this place. They ended up like getting to a point that they get like this triple Fangtus with Primal Fangtus looking for opportunities and actually like securing like some stuff for themselves. But then there was like a little bit too strong play, security or prime, play very cleanly. Uh, good team fight uh, when they kill four. Then they kind of play the map very strong with a tier two tower push on two inhibitor while two people were doing the all prime. Too much tempo generated from that play. Then set up a slow push and then go on to the primal side. Slow push get the inhibitors. They also like play perfectly the primal thing to fight. And then you have like a double buff against a team that is ahead and it's just too much to deal with.